So today we're heading up to a little tributary. It's just gorgeous fall weather. And uh, I'm gonna go see if the fish are still looking for hoppers up here. It's perfect, it's October, but it feels like September. There's a million other things we could be doing. Kids are in school, house is a mess. Uh, we got tons of work. Uh, should be probably getting ready for hunting season, but man, you gotta go when you can go. And when, uh, when Mother Nature throws you a gem like this, forget it, grab the rods and go fishing. So we're here in Missoula, Montana, our home, Waters, and this is our first episode for the February Room. Yeah, yeah, we're right out our back door here, um, dry fly fishing. You, you signed me up for Grasshopper. Yeah, well we've got this really nice late fall weather, it hasn't froze yet, so there's still hoppers out, um, fish are charged up. And we decided since episode one, started with the two of us and you sharing your story about the fly in the eye we yeah. thought what better place to, to shoot our first episode than here than the, the watershed where it happened this fishing it's, it's kind of like how I envision the trout fishing in New Zealand yeah it's like crystal clear water there's only like one fish per bucket I think what makes these waters so unique and so difficult is because of the clarity. It's so easy to spot. It's, it's almost like elk hunting. You can see your fish in the water. Yeah, yeah, you get, you get one shot at these fish. Um, and what I find most challenging about this type of fishing is in this gin clear water, is you can see, you can often see the fish coming up to eat your block. And so it's so easy to pull the trigger too early, but you really have to wait for that fish to come up, eat the bug, and then set the hook at whichever angle you think that fish has eaten it to turn it away from the, the fish's jaw. And it's super easy to miss it. So yeah, so we put on our little bugs that I like in here and um, we get Lauren set up and there's a fish in this little tight bucket right up next to the bank. And you drop your bug in there, comes up and eats it. I think what's so upsetting is that you can see, like we said, the water here is so clear and I miss it. You missed it, it's easy to do. But, fortunately... I, Justin's like, get after it again, because I don't think it's scared. It's, he, Justin can see the fish is still there. And so, I cast again. Eats it again. And I miss it. I miss <laughs> it again. Twice. Twice. But the fish is still there. Yeah, he hasn't felt the hook yet, it doesn't seem like. Like, you just kind of took it away from him a couple of times, or her. Um, so, give it another shot, and sure enough. I miss it again. Three times. Three times. Three eats on the same bug. I... Usually they only give you one chance. <laughs> <laughs> you really like to stick it where it hurts <laughs> well you got three shots at him i did and it really sucked it was a nice it was a nice fish and um i can't believe he gave me three or her three chances to make it right three times was not a charm for me 
So then I step in below you and I take the easy spot. I make Lauren fish for the hard fish that's tucked <laughs> up tight to the bank. You're just being kind. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I just run my fly <laughs> mid-river down this bucket and my fly is actually somewhat submerged but I see this fish come up and roll super slowly, eats the fly, set the hook and tie into this really gorgeous, gorgeous big native West Loaf cutthroat. It was absolutely beautiful. I mean, that thing was a hog. It was a football, just a football shape, really pretty fish. What I liked about it is you knew it was a cutthroat the moment you were like reeling it in because you could see like the bright, vibrant, orangish red right on its uh, on its face. Yeah, they're such brilliant fish. These native West Wolf cutthroats have so many colors on them. And you can really see them in the water. You can see that orangeness that they have um, versus the rainbow. And so Justin reads the water really well. And he'll point out like, this is a good section. So as I feel like as we continued on this day, I was getting a little bit more comfortable knowing where, uh, how to present my fly. And um, I think that's the one thing that I like to think of myself as I'm a really good copycat. So if I see someone doing it really well at some point, I tend to think like, oh, this is what he did that ended up with a good result. So we found another spot, like just kind of a mid-river bucket, like that one that I caught that nice cutty in. And Lauren starts working her fly in there. And sure enough, it's so cool, because I'm, though I'm a ways away from her, I could see the movement in the river. And I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, oh, just please let the fish eat the fly, because it's so easy to take it away from them prematurely. But sure enough, I got a fish on. You hooked him. Yeah, yes. you hooked him. Yes, it is. That's a big cutty. There you go. Good job. Oh. But all in all, it was so worth it to come out here, fish with you. And this is what the February room is about, is to get on the water fuel these fuel these good memories for February in Missoula when it's dark and cloudy because this is the reason why we live here. Yeah, we can look back on this and pushes you through for another season. And apologize to the kids profusely why we are five minutes yeah, late. Yeah, we're going to be late to pick them up. We better roll. Yep. Yep, let's go.